What's up guys and welcome to this new video about building a clean architecture MVVM file export app. In this application we will collect or generate random data which could be in a real project, data from a sensor, data from a Bluetooth device or from the network, from the database. And once we have retrieved enough data, we can generate a CSV file and once it is generated, we can share this file to any destination we want. Let me quickly show you this. When I click on start application, then the data collecting or generating is already um, started. And let's say we want to uh, collect 400,000 data, then I can click on generate file now. The user gets informed how far the generating progress actually is. And once it is finished, we can then click on this share icon and share this file to any destination we want. I think this is a really cool example for clean architecture and MBVM because we will see how powerful this is, uh, where to put the CSV logic, where to put the file saving logic because we need to save a temporary file which we can then share. And that together with updating the UI accordingly can be sometimes a little bit difficult. But we will go through this step by step and also this is a cool feature because in a lot of applications you want to provide the user a feature where he can actually share some kind of data. And in our case this is uh, CSV but this is not limited to CSV. You can also apply this logic for sharing pictures or other media. All right, okay, enough talking. I'm here in an empty Jetpack Compose project. In case you use XML for your layouts, you should be also able to follow along because we will have a really simple UI and most of the logic will be in the domain and in the data layer and in our view model. Let's check what we have already inserted. I have created these three colors, which you can find in my GitHub's repository, which is linked down below together with all the dependencies. Then let's go through the dependencies we need for our application. In the project build.cradle, we have the dependency for dagger hilt because we will use dagger hilt for dependency injection. In case you don't know what dependency injection is, I will explain this when we use, when we make use of dagger hilt. Dagger hilt is just a framework which helps us with this powerful principle. Then we have the plugin for dagger hilt as well. In our build.cradle for the module, we have the CSV parser dependency the dagger hilt dependencies and also the compose navigation dependency and then up here in the plugins for our module we have uh, kotlin kept and the dagger hilt plugin as well the first thing i would like to do is to set up our two modules in a package structure we won't have a real multi-module application here but we will kind of simulate it we will have on the one hand um, a, a core module which will only contain one file later but this file could potentially be used in multiple modules and then we have our export feature, which is uh, the main module here, where we put in all the logic. The core module, as I already said, will only contain one file. We can um, straight do this. We will create a new Kotlin class or file. And then uh, um, we will call this uh, resource. This will be a sealed class. For this resource class, I will just paste the code. It's not important to understand this in detail. It's just kind of a wrapper class which we can wrap around return types and then we can differentiate between success, error and loading and we can provide additional information like an error message or like uh, some loading informations for example. This class can be used in any application. You can make use of this in any feature, any return types when it comes to data processing for example. It's not that important to understand this in detail. You will also see how this works in practice later. And in case you don't want to type this off, you can of course also find this in my GitHub's repository. Then we can close the core module. We won't need it anymore. And we can go to the export feature. And here we will create a new package called data, another package called domain, and a third package called presentation. These are our three packages our three layers within the export module. In clean architecture you normally have this three layers data domain and presentation and we will first start with our data layer. In here we will have another package called file and this package will contain the logic for the file creation for saving the file and here we can create a new Kotlin interface and this will be our file writer interface. This interface will define what we actually need for writing such a file. And the concrete implementation will be saved up for later. 
And also our repository class will later make use of this file writer interface. And it does not need to know what's behind this interface. And we can then use any kind of implementation behind this interface for our file writing. The only thing that needs to be known from the repository later, which will make use of this file writer, is what we need to insert or need to pass in such a file writer function and what we will get returned. We can say suspend function write file and this will need a byte array and will return a resource of type string. And the string will be then the path of our file, which um, we will get when the file writing was successful. And we will also have a companion object, constvel, file name, and this is equal to file export app. And then we can realize this interface with a concrete implementation. And in our case, we will use the internal file system of Android, but we could also use the external file system of Android or even shared preferences. The only thing that needs to be done is to realize this function. In our file package, we can then create a new class called Android Internal Storage File Writer like this. And this file writer will realize the file writer interface. And then we can click on implement members and provide a concrete implementation of this write file function. For getting access of the files directory of our application, we need the context and we can uh, get this from add inject constructor. This is an annotation for Dagger Hilt. So Dagger Hilt now knows that in here something needs to be injected. And in this case, we will have the context. And for most of the cases, we need to say Dagger Hilt how to inject this. We will see this later. We need to define an extra file for that. And there we can uh, define how some classes, some objects need to be injected. But for the context, this is a default one, uh, which Dagger Hilt actually knows how to provide it. So we can um, let it stay like this. And in here, in our override uh, write file function, we can say, well, date time is equal to calendar dot get instance dot time because we will append the current date and the time to our file so that we can see when the file was actually created then we have a well formatter is equal to simple date format and we will provide this specific format and we will also have an underline here and then we can say return save file. We will pass the byte array, the file writer dot file name, which we defined in our interface, plus underscore plus formatter dot format date time, like this. And now we need to define this function, which will be a private function, save file. And this takes a byte array and a file name like this and it will return a resource of type string as well. We first need the files directory. We can get this from our context dot files directory. This is the file directory of our internal storage for the application. Let's uh, go to the device file explorer and for example here in data and data we have all the different applications and also this application I created. And each of this application um, has uh, some files here, a cache. And in this application, there's nothing into, but um, uh, this is exactly this directory, our internal um, application files directory, because we will use this for saving the temporary file. And this is a lot less pain than using the external one, especially um, after Android 11, I think. Then we will create a subfolder where folder is equal to file and we will pass our file directory and we will call this folder export app. And this will create the folder if it's not there yet. And if it's already there, then uh, this function will just do nothing. And now we want to delete everything that's inside this folder in case it actually exists. Because each time we export a file, it gets saved into this folder and we don't want to save multiple files. We only want to save the current file. And when a new export, a new share request is there, then all the old files need to be deleted. Otherwise we would blow up the storage. We can um, invoke this delete directory and pass the folder. 
And now we need to define this delete directory function. We can uh, make this down here, private function, delete directory. And this will take a directory of type optional file and will return a boolean in case you want to check on this function. Up here, we don't check if this was actually successful or not, but um, yeah, in a real project, maybe you should check this. We will say return if directory is not equal to null and directory is actually a directory because such a file can also be, a, for example, a CSV file. Then we will have a val children is equal to directory dot list. This will list all the children's of this directory. So everything that's into this directory. If children is not equal to null, then there is something into this directory for i in children dot indices. So we will hover over all the different files and directories which are in the current directory. Well, success is equal to delete directory. This will now be a recursive call directory and we will pass children at the index of i. So, well, this is more of a general formula to delete really all files. It will go inside the directory and if there's another directory and in this directory another directory, then this recursive call will go down to the deepest file and delete everything. And if this is uh, not successful, then we will return false. And below this for, no, below this if call, we will say directory.delete. And after that, we also need to uh, define the else if case. So if this uh, is not true, then uh, we will say else if directory is not equal to null and directory is file because uh, this can also happen or this is in our case always true because we only save files in this directory and then we will say directory dot delete and if none of this is the case then we will say false and then uh, with this function uh, we really destroy or delete everything which is in the folder we pass here all right then we can check if the folder does not exist then we need to create it and I need to correct me. I said that the folder will get created up here when we invoke this, but uh, yeah, this is not true. This just tries to get this folder. And uh, if this is not existing, then we need to create it manually. We will say if folder mkdir, this will try to create a folder. If this is uh, not successful, then we will try it with folder mkdirs. In here, we could do some kind of error logging, but I will leave this up to you. Then we can say, well, file name is equal to file, and then we pass our folder, and we will say file name, which we will get from uh, our function call parameter, and then we will also append CSV like this. And then we need an output stream, well, OS is equal to file output stream, and we will pass our file name, and this file output stream allows us then to write to this specific file. Then we can say return try well path is equal to URI dot from file and we will pass our file name dot path and if this is null we will return resource dot error and we will say for the message could not get file path like this. And now you can see how we use this resource class we can uh, return an error and provide an additional error message like this and in the repository or in a view model or somewhere else where we collect this return types we can then check on the different resource types and we would see that this is an error and then we could read the error message all right below this well path we will say os dot write and we will pass the byte array which we will get also in this function here and then we will say resource dot success and we will pass the path because we need this path later to make the sharing possible because when we share a file we need the path where the file is actually located and then a so-called provider can provide us this file to share it and if something happens inside this try block we will catch the error and this error can normally just be of type IO exception when dealing with files. Here we could again do some uh, 
error logging, but uh, I will just uh, return resource.error. And for the error message, we will pass e.localized message, and this can be null. And for that case, if it's null, we say unknown error, because then we actually don't have a clue what was going on. In the finally block of this try catch, we say os.close, because in each case, either this is successful or this is an error, we need to close the output stream, otherwise we, we could have some kind of memory leak or undefined behavior. So we should always close it and we can do this in such a finally block. This was it for dealing with the file logic. Now we can go to our data package and create a new package called converter. And in here we will define the behavior, the logic for converting data and especially converting it into a CSV byte array. In the converter package, we can create a new interface called data converter. And the same principle here, we will just define a function which needs to be realized to convert data. And later, it does not matter which is the underlying logic. So it doesn't matter if it's a CSV converter, if it's uh, some kind of other um, uh, data format converter, it just needs to realize this function. And this function will be convert sensor data and we will pass an export data list of type list export model we need to define this data class we will do this after we define this interface and this will return a flow of type resource of type generator info and we also need to define this generator info data class and let's do this right now so that we get rid of this uh, errors in our converter package we can create a data class called generate info and this will have a well byte array of type byte array which is optional and null by default and a well progress percentage which is of type integer and zero by default this will indicate the current progress percentage later when we create the csv file because when we have 1 million or 2 million entries then this could take a while and we want to inform the user how far the progress actually is then we can um, close this and here, oh, this is called generate info. Now we also need to define the export model, but since this is a domain object, this is our business object, which the application is about. We can't define this in the data layer in our converter package, for example. We do this in the domain layer. In the domain layer, we have a new package called model. And in this model package, we create the data class called export model and this will have two properties on the one hand property sensor data of type float which is not further specified and a well time of type long so the current timestamp when the sensor data was created then we can go back to our data converter and import this export model class and then you can see we access the domain layer from our data layer because the data layer is the layer we are currently into where the data converter is defined and we access the domain layer and in terms of clean architecture this is fine the data layer is able to access the domain layer otherwise if we would uh, define this export model inside our data layer where we defined this generate info for example then we would later need to access it from the domain layer and the domain layer is the core of our architecture and it shouldn't be dependent on uh, the data layer for example and this is why we define this export model in the domain layer and this generate info is only accessed inside the data layer so it's fine to define it in here you will see this later when we access the different objects and i will also try to leave a comment when we access different things in terms of clean architecture. All right, okay, then we can start defining our CSV data converter. In our converter package, we will create a new package called CSV. And there we can put into everything that has something to do with CSV. In our case, this will be just our data converter CSV. And this will be a class and will realize our data converter interface. Then we can again click on implement members and we need to override this convert sensor data function. And we can also put this in a separate line so it's a little bit more readable. Remove this to do. And first of all, we want to define a private function which helps us later to get the CSV writer. We will say private function get CSV writer. 
and we will pass a writer in here of type writer and this will return an ICSV writer. In here we have a nice builder functional. We will say return CSV writer builder and pass the writer and then we will say with separator. And for that uh, we go below our override functional and define a companion object. And here we will have a const well separator, which is a semicolon. You could also use a comma, for example. And we can also define the header data for our CSV file later, which will be an array of for the first column sensor data and for the second column the time. And up here we can pass our separator. We will say with quote character csv writer dot no quote character and then with escape character C csv writer dot default escape character with line end csv writer dot default line end and well uh, this are just uh, example values i have also from the documentation uh, or from stack overflow or something like this and well this works fine with uh, this case but maybe you have some special cases when it comes to a csv converting then you can of course adjust this then we say dot build and we still have a compiler error because it needs to be a character let's use single quotes here then the error should be gone and now we can go to our override function for our override functioner, we will apply a so-called flow builder because we now build a flow which can be then collected later from our repository or view model and we can always inform the user how far the CSV converting actually is. First of all, we want to emit resource.loading and we will pass the generator info and we defined some default values. The progress is zero and the byte array is null. So this is fine. We don't need to pass arguments for that. Then we say well writer is equal to string writer. Well CSV writer is equal to get CSV writer and we will pass this string writer. Then we can say well values for 1% is equal to export data list dot size divided by 100 and we will put this in parentheses and add plus one because there's a single case when uh, this export data list is below 100 then uh, this will become zero and later we need to divide some value by this and we would divide then by zero so we will have uh, plus one and to explain what this value is about we have for example an export data list of 100,000 values then we will divide this by 100 and the result of this would be 1000. Then we need, would need to process 1000 values to actually have 1% finished. And this values for 1% indicates that. Then we say var already converted values is equal to zero because at the beginning we haven't converted any values yet. Then we say CSV writer dot write next and then we will pass our header data so the first row will contain our header data sensor data and time for the description then we have export data list dot for each and here we get access to the export models now we will write the corresponding information for each model csv writer dot write next array of and we will first say export model dot sensor data and for the second value we will say export model dot time and after that we can increase the already converted values by one and we could check if already converted values modulo values for one percent is equal to zero this is always true if we can divide this already converted values by this values for one percent without some rest this is what this modulo operator does we have for example already converted values of 50,000 and the values for one percent would be 1000 and then this could be divided and we would result in 50 percent the reason for that is that we don't always emit new values after each uh, iteration here we will only emit new information if the current percentage actually changed we can then say resource.loading and for the generate info 
we will pass a progress percentage is equal to already converted values divided by values for 1%. And now you can also see why we add, add this plus one up here, because in some cases, when this results in zero, when we have very uh, little data, then this would be divided by zero and would result an, in an exception. Below this for each block, when we are finished, we can say emit resource.success and we will pass the generate info and for the byte array, we pass this time string writer.buffer and we say two byte array like this. And for the progress percentage, we can pass 100 just to be sure. After that, the last step is to close our CSV writer and also the string writer. And we get a little uh, warning here because we have a possibly blocking call in non-blocking context and we should use the dispatches.io. But later in our view model, we will collect this flow in the dispatches.io context. So this should be fine and we can ignore this warning for now. All right, okay, now it's time to put everything together. We can go to our domain layer and create a new package called repository because the interface of the repository will be defined in domain layer because it will be accessed from our view model and the view model then accesses the domain layer. You will see this um, uh, when we put everything together and define everything that all the different accesses from the different layers are in the right order. We will say export repository and this will be an interface. The function of this repository will be start export data and we will pass an export list of type list of type export model. And the return type will be of type flow, of type resource, of type path info. This path info is a data class we need to define now in our model in the domain layer. We will say data class path info. The first property will be well path of type string, which is optional and set to null by default because the path is only set when uh, we have currently reached 100%. Then we have well progress percentage of type integer, which is zero by default. Then we can close this data class, import it here, and then we defined the repository interface in the domain layer, and the realization will be now in the data layer. For that, we will create a new package called repository. Inside the repository package, we will have a class called export repository implement. This will realize the export repository interface. We can click on implement members. And inside the export repository implement, we also need access to uh, two different interfaces. We will say add and check constructor, private well file writer of type file writer and private well data converter of type data converter. And now you can see we get the interfaces we defined before provided here. And all we need to know is that, for example, this file writer has a function called file write, or write file, and needs a byte array and returns a resource of type string. We don't need to know about the underlying implementation, and this is why these interfaces are so powerful. In the test cases, for example, if you want to test this export repository, then you could provide some fake implementation for a file writer, because for a test case, you don't want to always write to a file system. And in case you want to switch the generating, uh, the strategy for the generating, you don't want to use the CSV uh, dependency here, you want to create the file in another way, then you could just um, uh, change the underlying implementation. And for this repository, this file writer dot write file function would remain the same because it just depends on the interface and not on the concrete implementation. And we can also see that uh, the export repository implement needs to be in the data layer because it needs access to the file writer and to the data converter, which are both in the data layer. If we would define this repository implement in the domain layer, then we would access the data layer from the domain layer, which would be wrong in terms of clean architecture. And since the export repository interface, this here is defined in the domain layer, everything is fine because the export repository interface does not need to know about the file writer and the data converter interface because this is more of a concrete logic. One thing that's left to explain is how Dagger Hilt currently knows how to provide these two interfaces. It does not yet because we didn't define it. We will do this after we implemented this export repository implement 
After that, we will set up Dagger Hilt and also define how to provide such a file writer and such a data converter. But let's take care of this start export data function first. In here, we have our data converter dot convert sensor data. And for that, we will pass the export list and map the result because uh, this uh, convert sensor data returns the flow of type resource of type generate info. We, here we get access to the generate info like this, and we can say when generate info. And now we can check on the type of this resource class. This is really cool because we can say if uh, when generate info is resource dot success is resource dot error or is resource dot loading. And in each case, we can apply different logic and we can also get access to the information of this resource because we will get when we have a look at this flow, we will have this resource and it's wrapped around the generate info. So we will also get access to this generate info if we want, for example, in this success block. Let's start with the easy case in the error block. We will say return at map and we will return resource.error and for the error message, we will pass our generator info dot error message. In case we are currently loading, then we will say return map resource dot loading. And since we are currently in a mapping function, we need to map this result, this generate info to the type path info. So we will say path info and for the progress in percentage, we simply say generate info dot data question mark dot progress in percentage. And if this is null, then we will simply pass zero. Okay, so if we are currently loading, then we will just map our generate info to a path info and we will pass the progress percentage up to the view model because there we can then show the current percentage and because we can then also check if this is a currently loading answer and we can show the dialog where the progress indicator is and list all the or show the different percentages depending on how far we convert it. Okay, in the resource.success block, we need to apply a little bit more logic because when we are into this block, we know that the generate does the, that the data converter successfully generated the CSV data, then we need to store this data in the file system. And now you can also see that this uh, repository class is really cool because it puts together different data responsible logics. So on the one hand, we have the file writing logic, on the other hand, the data converter logic, and we don't want to make them communicate with each other. Therefore, we have this export repository, which puts everything together in a central place. In here, we will say generate info dot data dot byte array. And since this is optional, we will apply dot let. And then we can say when well result is equal to file writer dot write file, and we will pass it. This will trigger the file writing. We can then open a block and do such a resource dot success loading and error check again. We can say is resource dot success is resource dot loading is resource dot error. For the error case, we will say return at map again. Resource dot error error message will be a result dot error message. The loading case should not happen, but since we should make this when expression exhaustive and also map this to a path info, we just say return at map resource dot error. And for the error message, we will simply say unknown error. With the loading case should not happen, I mean that uh, the file writer does not emit loading values. So this can't happen. In the resource dot success block, we can say return at map resource.success, we will pass a path info for that. The path will be our result dot data and the progress percentage will be 100. This was it for the start export data function to put everything together, file writing, generating CSV data, emit the current percentage later for the view model. The only thing that's left is to switch the context in here when uh, our Flow block ends, we can say flow on dispatchers.io because before we have seen in the data converter 
CSV that we need to do this in the dispatches.io because this is a possibly blocking call. The warning won't go away, but since we use this flow on operator, the whole flow chain down here is executed in the dispatches.io curating context and this uh, the compiler just does not recognize that this is also executed in this context and this is why the warning won't go away we still have a little error here a return expression required in a function with a block body okay we don't return anything but we can change this with an equal sign here oh no we can't actually we need to uh, take this whole mapping function and put it behind this equal sign. Let's go down and uh, copy all of this and cut it out. Then remove these two parentheses and for better readability we should also put this in separate lines. So this mapping function needs to be put behind this equal sign like this and then we still have an error because we have a question mark here. Something can still return an optional type. I think it's here in this mapping function. Let's try this out. Return at map resource dot arrow because uh, well this shouldn't also be happening. Unknown error occurred. Okay, all right. Then uh, the error is gone and we are good to go to create our view model and collect this data for the UI. But before we actually do this, we will define the Dagger Hilt module to tell Dagger Hilt how to provide this file writer, for example, how to provide this data converter. For that, we can collapse the data package and create a new package called DI. In this DI package, we will have an object called export module. And for Dagger Hilt to know that this is the module where we defined different classes and how they should be provided, we need to annotate this with add module and add install in. And for the add install in, we say singleton component double double colon class. And now we can start with defining the different classes and how they should be provided. We need to annotate this with add provides and add singleton. We will say function provide file writer. And this file writer, as I mentioned earlier, needs the context. And here we can say application context, context of type context. And this will return of type file writer. And we will return the concrete implementation of it, the Android internal storage file writer, and we will pass the context. The next thing we want to provide is our CSV writer. We will say add provides and add singleton again. Functional provide data converter of type data converter. For the return, we will say data converter CSV. And this does not take any arguments. And the last thing that needs to be provided is the uh, repository at provides at singleton function provide export repository. This will take the file writer of type file writer and the data converter of type data converter and this will return uh, export repository and since Dagger Hilt now knows how to provide a file writer and also how to provide a data converter because we defined it up here we can just pass this as arguments and for the return we say export repository implement and we will pass the file writer and the data converter. For the Dagger Hilt setup we also need to go to our main activity because this is our entry point. Here we can say Android entry point and the last thing we need to do is to go to our root package and create a new class called export application. This needs to inherit from application and we need to annotate this with Hilt Android app. And in our manifest we need to specify the app name with export application. And then Dagger Hilt is set up and should make the dependency injection for us. Now we finally can go to our presentation layer and take care of our view model and the corresponding screen. And in here we will have a file export state data class which is used by our view model. And we can also put this in a separate package. Let's create a package called state and put this file export state into there. This file export state will have all the state variables 
which can then be observed by the UI, like uh, loading information, progress information, uh, if the share data is actually clicked, if the shared data is ready, and so on. We will have a well is generating loading of type bool, which is false by default. Well is share data clicked of type boolean and false as well by default. Well is shared data ready of type boolean and false. Well share data URI of type string, which is optional and null by default. Well failed generating of type boolean and false as well. Well generating progress of type integer and this is zero by default. Let's also correct this little typo, generating progress. And then we are good to go to use this file export state data class in our view model. In the presentation package, we will create a new class called export view model. And we need to annotate this with add hilt view model because uh, Dagger Hilt needs to treat a view model a little bit more specific. So we need to annotate this. It will also have an inject constructor annotation. And in here we will provide well export repository of type export repository. And now you can see that uh, it accesses the domain layer because the export repository interface, which we provide here, is defined in the domain layer. If we would also define the interface in the data layer, then the view model would directly access the data layer and this would in terms of clean architecture be wrong and this uh, export view model needs to inherit from view model first we have a private var export list is equal to mutable list of export model and this will be just the list we fill manually for the ui normally you would retrieve this export model data class objects from a bluetooth device or from sensor data from the network or somewhere else. Then we have a var collected data amount by mutable state of, and this is zero by default and private set. We need to import the get and set value for the mutable state of delegates. This mutable state var is just to show the user how much data are actually collected. We could also somehow use the export list size, but I would like to make this a state and increase it each time new data arrived. Then we have a var file export state by mutable state of, and this will take the default state of our file export state object. Uh, we already defined this in the data class with all the false by default values. We make this a private set as well so that we can only set this file export state within our view model. And then we can create a functional generate export file. The first thing we want to set is the file export state to file export state dot copy is generating loading to true so that we can then start to show the dialog where the progress indicator is and the current percentage value. After that export repository dot start export data and we pass our export list to a list. We don't want to pass a mutable list. We want to pass an immutable one. This is why we do this mapping. After that, we can say on each and get access to each path info object, which gets emitted in this flow chain. So from our CSV converter and then over the repository, which maps it from the generating info to the path info. And then it arrives in our view model and we get access to each of these values inside this on each block. Then we can check on the path info if is resource.success is resource.loading or if it's resource.error. In case there's an error, we can say file export state is equal to file export state dot copy failed generating to true. When we are currently loading, we will say path info dot data dot let because this data is of type optional. File export state is equal to file export state dot copy. Generating progress is equal to path info dot data dot progress percentage. So we get always the current percentage of the data converting and can show this to the user. When we are in the success block, we can say file export state is equal to file export state dot copy is shared data ready is equal to true. 
is generating loading is equal to false, share data URI is equal to pathinfo.data.path, and the generating progress is equal to 100. And let me think about it in the error case. We can also, or we need also, set the is generating loading to false because otherwise, if we would receive an error, then the loading bar would still uh, indicate that we are currently loading because the is generating info is set to true up here. And uh, if we don't have this, it wouldn't be set to false again. The last thing we need to do for this flow is to say launch in because otherwise the flow would remain cold. We need to make it hot that it really emits values. So we will say launch in view model scope. Before we manually insert all the export lists data, we need to have two additional functions. On the one hand, on share data click. So when the user clicks on the share data icon, we say file export state is equal to file export state dot copy is share data clicked and we will set this to true then we can copy and paste this and here we have on share data open and here we set this to false so this will make sure that the user can click on the share icon multiple times and the share dialog opens multiple times otherwise it would only open the first time when this is set to true so we will set this to false after the dialog shows where the user can select the different apps he want to share the file with and then he can click on this multiple times. All right, okay, let's go up to uh, this positioner and define the init block for this view model. Here we first need to define a job, private var, collecting job of type job, which is optional and null by default. Let's import this job. And then we say collecting job is equal to viewmodelscope.launch. Here we define an infinitely while loop, so while true. We will delay each iteration by two milliseconds. And then we set collected data amount to plus equal 160. Then we will insert some values at all list of. And I will just copy and paste them. You can find them in my GitHub repository, but you can also try this out with just one value the sharing should work and also the file creation uh, i would like to just try this out with one or two million values so <laughs> each iteration uh, 160 of this random generated values get inserted so we will have tons of values which can be created for the csv file and then the loading dialog shows up for a few seconds otherwise it would uh, disappear immediately and one thing that needs to be done is in our generate export file we need to stop this job we say collecting job dot cancel because we don't want to collect any more values if the user actually clicked on the generate export or generate file button okay this was it for our view model now we can create our export screen for that we will go to our presentation package and create a new kotlin file called export screen this will be a composable export screen and it will take our export view model of type export view model and we can generate this with this build view model function. First of all, we need to access the file export state is equal to export view model dot file export state and we also need the context which is equal to local context dot current. And now we need to start a launch defect because showing the chair dialog is a side effect and we need to do this in terms of compose in a launch defect or in some other effect handler. We will say launch defect for the key we will pass file export state and th that means each time this file export state changes this launch defect gets triggered. In here we check if file export state dot is share data ready and if this is ready then we can show the share dialog we will say well uri is equal to file provider dot get uri for file we will pass the context the context dot application context dot package name plus provider and now we need to define this provider we will come to this after um, uh, this uri value is finished we will say file dot file export state dot share data URI and we can assert that this is not optional because otherwise the shared data wouldn't be ready. Let's import 
file. And now let's take care of this file provider, which makes sure that the right file is provided from our internal file system. For that, we can go to resource and in the XML section, we will create a new resource file called provider paths and then click OK. In here, we can go to this code section and just paste this into. This will provide the internal files and the file paths and looks in the current directory. You can find this from my GitHub repository, but I think this is also not that much to type off. In our manifest file, in the um, application section below this activity, we can then paste this kind of code, which will be our file provider. Well, I won't type this off here. I will just copy and paste this because I'm not that good with XML syntax and this would um, take a while. When, but just to explain this, um, well, we have a file provider here from Android X core content and this will look now in the resource where our provider path is and um, uh, we grant URI permissions and yeah, the authority is our application ID and the provider of our application. So, well, in short, this just makes sure that a file can be provided with from this file provider. We can also define the query later for the action sent. So when we um, actually want to share the file, then uh, we need to start an intent with the action uh, sent uh, type. And for that, we also need to define this queries. And yeah, the MIME type is uh, every type here. We could also uh, limit this to text or uh, some other kind of media type. But yeah, also just copy and paste, uh, check on this in my GitHub repository. Uh, also, this can be typed off, it's not that much. Okay, all right, let's close the uh, manifest and go back to our export screen. Where is it? Here. After we have our UI, we can define an intent is equal to intent. And for the action, we say action send. The intent.type will be text slash CSV intent.put extra here we pass a subject for example if you want to share this to an email or via an email then uh, you could also define a subject and then the uh, email subject is automatically filled in we say extra subject and for that we say my export data we also need to define the stream intent.put extra intent.extra-stream and there we pass our URI. After that, we also need a chooser. Well, chooser is equal to intent.createChooser and we will pass our intent and for the header, we pass share with. Now we can say activity pass the context, our chooser and for the options, we will pass null. And the last thing we need to do is export view model dot on share data open because if you remember we will set this is share data clicked to false so that this launched effect gets triggered again and again if the user may want to share this data to multiple applications one thing that's wrong here is this if condition check and this should not trigger if is shared data ready because we only want to open the share dialog if is share data clicked, not if it's ready. If it's ready, uh, will uh, then uh, result in showing the export or the share icon. Below this launched effect, we can then start defining our UI. We will start with a box, which takes a modifier. This will fill the max size. The background will be set to gray and the content alignment will be alignment.center. In the box scope, we will first have a column the vertical arrangement of this color will be arrangement.space around. Horizontal alignment will be set to center horizontally. And this will also take a modifier which fills the max size. Then we can open the column scope. And the first thing we want to show is the text. Collected data amount, which we will get from our export view model dot collected data amount. The style will be set to material theme dot typography dot h4. The font weight will be font weight dot bold. The color will be our white color and the text align will be set to text align dot center. Below this text composable, we will have a button with an on-click method. And in this on-click method, we will 
invoke the export view models generate export file function. Then we will also set button colors. We can say colors is equal to button defaults dot button colors. The background color will be set to orange. The content color will be set to white and the disabled background color will be set to orange as well. This button takes also a modifier. This modifier will fill the max width by 90%. The padding will be 10 dp and we will also apply a shape which will be for this button a circle shape. We can also enable or disable this button. We only enable it if the file was not created yet. So we can say enable is equal to export view model dot file export state dot is shared data ready. And we negate this. So if the shared data is not ready yet, then we can invoke it or we can click on this button. And I think we have the file export state already defined above. So we don't need to uh, get access to it via this view model. Then we can open uh, the button scope for the visualization of the text. We will say text is equal to generate file. The style will be material theme dot typography dot h6. The font weight will be font weight dot bold and the text align will be set to text align dot center. Now we can also define when to show the icon for the sharing. We will use an animated visibility for that to make a little bit of an animation for that when it should be actually shown. We can say file export state dot is shared data ready. Then we can define an icon button with an on click method. And when we click on this share icon button, then we invoke export view model dot on share data click. And this will set this is share data clicked to true. And back in our export screen, we can go above to this launch defect. Then this will trigger or first the launch defect will trigger because the file export state did change. And then this if condition is true and the share sheet or the share intent starts. Back on our icon button, we can then invoke the scope and define an icon. This will take a painter resource which comes from r.drawable.export. And first we need to import r. And I think I already defined it. No, we don't have this export in the drawable. I thought I already insert. Oh, I inserted it in the in the XML resource file. This is wrong. We can um, take this and paste it inside the drawable. Then we can close this and remove it from the XML resource file. And then the arrow is gone. Then we also need to pass a content description. I will call this simply export. The tint will be set to orange. And this icon button also takes a little modifier. And this modifier's size will be set to 120 dp. The last thing that's left is our dialog, which we should show to the user when we are currently generating the file and indicate that we are currently loading and show the corresponding percentage. We can do this down here. And we will first start with an if condition. If file export state dot is generating loading, then we can invoke this dialog. And we will pass an on dismiss request, or we just leave this empty, but it's required to define one. Then we have a column which takes a modifier, and this modifier will fill the max size. The vertical arrangement will be set to arrangement dot spaced by 15 dp. The horizontal alignment will be set to alignment dot center horizontally. Inside this column, we will first have a circular progress indicator, and we will set its color to white. Below that, we also have a text which shows the user the current percentage. Generating a file and then we open the parentheses and for the text we pass export view model or no, we can again use the file export state dot generating progress. Then we append a percentage, close the parentheses and apply three additional dots. For the color, we say color dot white or color is equal to white, style will be material theme dot typography dot h6, and the font weight will be set to font weight dot medium. Okay, all right, I think we are good to go to try this out. After we go to our main activity, remove this default stuff and invoke our export screen. We can also remove this and then we can launch the application. 
and check if everything works. Okay, you can see we add a lot of data and this happens really quickly because each two milliseconds, um, 160 data. Okay, um, we can't click on this generate file button. Eh? This is an error which should not occur. Well, okay, I found a mistake. It's here. We, of course, should enable the button if the is shared data ready is not true because then we should generate the file. I think this happened before when I said export view model dot file export state is shared data ready and I had it like this and I think when I removed this uh, export view model then uh, I didn't add the exclamation mark again. Okay, all right, we can uh, try this again, start the application. All right, okay, we can see again that we add a lot of data and we see also that the button here is clickable, indicated by the white color of the text of this button. Now let's generate the file by clicking on this button and you can see the file is generated and we get updated with the current percentage. The generate file button is now disabled because of course the file is already generated. Now we can click on the share icon and we can share the file which is named here file export app uh, and the date and the time dot csv. We can share it now to gmail or drive and of course in your real world application to a lot of more apps. We can also um, uh, close this again uh, with the back partner and click on it again and then we could potentially share this file to multiple applications. Let me quickly also show you the device file explorer. Here we can go to uh, um, uh, our application. This is the file export YouTube. And here the internal files directory is now empty. Oh no, okay, it updated accordingly. We have this 10 MB. I think it's still readable. Yes, it is. And when we click on this, we can also see that this is our CSV file with two different columns and here are the random generated objects. Let's launch the application again and have a look at the file system if the last file is actually deleted and it only contains the new file. Let's click on generate file again and yeah of course we should uh, center this percentage information uh, to the middle. We will take care of this after we had a look on the file system. Um, uh, still works, everything is fine. And then let's go to the file system. We can also expand this a little bit. You can see this file now. And when we click on synchronize, then we have an updated one and the old file is deleted. Okay, let's close this device file explorer again. Also close the CSV file and go to our export screen to the dialog because we want to center the current percentage information. We can do this with this modifier, I think. We should only switch this to Filmex width and that it does not expand the whole size because such a dialog is centered in the middle of the screen by default. Let's uh, launch the application again and have a look on that. Uh, let's collect some data before we actually generate the file because we want to see this dialog a few seconds. Well, last time it collected the data faster, I think. Well, okay, I think 150,000 are enough. Yeah, you can see this was in the middle now. It was uh, centered and looked better. All right, okay, this was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you could learn something. And maybe you can also apply this logic in your own projects. It's also cool to share different kinds of data and also to create CSV files in some cases and share them afterwards or make use of the internal storage system of Android. In case you want to learn more about building clean architecture MVVM apps in Android, then uh, make sure you check out uh, my other MVVM clean architecture application. And in the future, I will also do more videos about building such applications.